Hello my dear friends, it's uh, AK Rex here and uh, today we are back with a new uh, creature review and analysis video. So um, a lot of you have been asking me in the comments uh, and uh, some even messaged me privately to do the Triceratops from Dino Crisis 2. So let's look into it right now. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, so, um, it's important to understand, uh, first of all, to establish what Triceratops actually is. Because at the moment, in paleontology, uh, to my awareness, there are two currently recognized uh, species of this genus. The type species, which is basically the one that's commonly associated with this genus, that is known as Triceratops horridus, and the other one is known as Triceratops prorsus. Um, this is the diagram which uh, I can see has been uh, roughly sketched out just to show a, an overall size comparison. And uh, we can also see the difference in their body plans slightly. Specifically on their head, so not so much as their, um, you know, overall uh, body plan, obviously. Uh, but you can tell already that uh, Prorsus looks like somewhat of a slightly more robust and massive one uh, compared uh, to the Horridus. Now, one other thing to understand is also uh, there are quite uh, significant differences in the shape of the horns, their sizes and their positioning, and thus making the skull and the snout structure quite different between these two species. Now, uh, to give you a better idea, let's actually have a look at these uh, skeletals. I uh, have personally taken photographs of these when I was uh, in uh, the museum, so the Prorsus is... Uh, uh, the one that's in the Museum of Los Angeles Natural History and uh, the other one is in the American Museum uh, which is in New York. The uh, New York one is the Horridus, as you can tell. So, uh, um, you see how their um, uh, nasal horns are different both in their shapes and sizes. Prorsus has a bigger one and it's much more pointy and it also is much closer to the tip of the snout while uh, Horridus has it way closer towards its uh, eyebrow horns and uh, thus making the tip of the snout somewhat look longer. And um, the other uh, thing as well to understand is uh, that the Prorsus has a slightly shorter and a different shape of the uh, eyebrow uh, horns, while Horridus has them a little bit uh, longer and somewhat a different shape. Sometimes they are shown as straight, other times they could be a little bit curvy. Uh, like, for example, you can, you can see some kind of very, very small curve going in this skeletal drawing of Horridus done by uh, Scott Hartman. So, um, now that we have acknowledged the uh, very idea of what these are and the fact that they are different species, which uh, actually, as far as I'm aware of, also lived in a different period. Uh, be, like, they were both late Cretaceous, they both uh, may have even intercepted each other at one point in time, but uh, as the later period commences prior to extinction, it's uh, become more uh, common to find uh, the Prorsus uh, species. While Horridus, I don't believe there was evidence of them being found in that particular period when the process was in its majority. So it seems that Horridus may have declined at that point and uh, for some reason got took over by Prorsus. So, uh, but the two is, what is odd is that the two share some geographical uh, common grounds and even in some cases, I, I again, this is not something I can confirm at this point because finding the relevant paper material has been a little bit of a pain uh, for me as of late. So uh, there will definitely be another video where I will go into more detail about Triceratops in general and other Ceratopsians, but uh, not in this video. This is mainly to focus on this Dino Crisis strike. So for that, since we established the uh, species and uh, what they represent and how they look, let's go into the main subject, which is the Dino Crisis Triceratops itself. Now, this one here, as you can tell, has somewhat of a interesting, odd look to it. You cannot really tell 
what exactly um, does it resemble? Obviously, this is not how I would say the snout of a Triceratops should really look like. It doesn't uh, seem to be... Like, it looks extremely uh, short, wide, and uh, just generally completely different from what an actual Triceratops snout should be. I mean, uh, I don't even see how this can even be considered a Triceratops, only just, you know, by sheer presence of three horns, just given the generic name. But the problem I'm seeing is uh, that it just doesn't look like either. It's really hard to say whether which species they actually took as their main uh, template to uh, replicate this uh, sort of uh, look and design. It's just really odd. I'm, I'm actually struggling to place it. But I would probably say, given that they're putting the uh, nasal horn way up front, and uh, they are kind of trying to, you know, make it a little bit pointier, and the brow, brow horns are not particularly too long, I would probably say it's a process. But then again, um, it's just really not giving you a good idea. So, in other words, what I'm say what I'm seeing is just a completely made up fictional um, design of a creature, and being ticking the basic boxes, resembling the look somehow, and being called Triceratops. So, in my opinion, I don't really even know what to compare it to. So. Based on that, I can already tell you that I don't find the skull design accurate to any of the given and presented species. Neither Prorosus nor Horidos share this kind of plan of the skull. They are completely different. The frill itself as well, it's quite a tricky one because, yeah, it's rounded, you can see that more or less. It's quite a uh, resemblant of either of them, but even then it's just a little bit odd, like it doesn't have, uh, I don't know, like I'm honestly struggling, you see this is the first time I'm actually doing this series and I honestly struggle to place the design of where they took it from, um, but uh, I would probably say that there is some kind of a mix between the two perhaps going on here. Which, which which honestly confuses me quite a bit. Uh, the other important thing to understand as well is that you look at the um, look at the way uh, also because of the snout being uh, made so uh, you know so wide. It also affects the front bit as well, the so-called big area of the snout, which you can probably tell now it should be also much, much narrower. It should not be like uh, the way it is here, so wide and stuff, so that's not really how it is. And also, I uh, wanted to point out that the actual horns, they they made them look a little bit um, too much, like they are, you know, embedded into this kind of area, like they don't look like they are part of the actual thing, like because in actual fact it looks to me uh, from the skeletons that both nasal and uh, especially if you look at the Horidas, uh, nasal horns especially, it's kind of more dissolved into the skull rather than just protruding from it like somebody just basically put it there. On a, on a different one, on the uh, Prorsus, it looks uh, the same except that it's protruding more. But it's not like it's a separate structure. It's uh, both of the, all of the horns look like they are all part of the skull structure. But but in this one, we see clearly that it's not really what it's being represented. So obviously the game is very old, and um, it's important to acknowledge that because the design process of this uh, game took place when you know before a lot of these commonly known studies have been done. However, I uh, I can only say that uh, this is extremely uh, 
odd and I could already give a very big no-no as far as the uh, skull and head design are concerned and like I said this is the most important part <laughs> in my opinion to get right when you want to represent species correctly as they display the most indicative features of the species most of the time so uh, that is unfortunately wrong now as for the color and general appearance is concerned, I am quite content with color. I can totally see this color being plausible. We do not have any evidence to tell what color the Triceratops in particular was. But we do know that uh, certain colors perhaps, like this one, the dark green, they look somewhat natural. They look like they could easily be consistent with the environment where it may have lived and uh, they don't create the idea of them looking perhaps a bit too colorful and cartoony to a degree. I mean, of course it's possible maybe that the film would have, would have had a bit more color, but then again, it's possible it may not have. So there are different ways to go about it, to be perfectly fair. Now, in Tegument Choice, I'm also quite happy. The, we, are, we know already that Ceratopsians were, so far from the evidence, discovered with scaly impressions, and in fact a lot of these impressions have been well preserved, specifically for Triceratops, so there is no doubt that they were scaly, and no, they did not have any quills, as it was previously suggested. This idea has been more or less just one of those, you know, things that was suggested once, and people just took it a little bit out of the context and blew it out of proportion, and started applying it to everything, but that is clearly absolutely incorrect and uh, therefore should not be, in my opinion, considered as accurate. So, in my opinion, this uh, particular reconstruction, as far as the integument goes, is perfectly correct. Now let's get into what we have about the uh, size a little bit, and then we get into the other points in the game itself. So, size-wise, at least on the page that I found for Dino Crisis Wiki, which obviously could be wrong because wikis are known to get things wrong, and there's a certain I could do a separate video on that in particular regarding some franchises, which I will, if you want me to get into at some point. But this is not the point. Uh, right now, we want to examine this little fella. And uh, on the page it says that supposedly the length is uh, 7.9 to 9 meters, uh, aka 26.0 uh, to 29.5 feet, and the height is about 2.9 to 3 meters, 9.5 9.8 feet. Now, uh, and I presume this is this would be at the hip as well. So uh, this could make sense. I mean, I can totally. I'm not sure about the height, but uh, possibly that also can make sense. But the uh, length definitely does make sense because Triceratops was a very big creature. It was absolutely massive. So therefore, yes, the size, as far as I'm concerned, is correct. Now onto the behavior. Unfortunately, and description, we don't have a lot. We don't even have a proper <laughs> description of it. Just a few things that they mention. Um, that we basically uh, see them, you know, in a game when uh, supposedly uh, the players, uh, controlling players, stumbles in their territory. The couple of them, there's a couple of Triceratopses, basically, they probably mistakenly think that you have disturbed their nesting ground or something like that, and they start charging at you. And guess what? They chase your jeep and you have to shoot them off before they finally give up. Now, uh, I have several problems with this. First of all, I do not see a Triceratops really giving you this long kind of chase, because this is basically trying to show that they are doing whatever they can just to murder you. Like, they are literally trying to murder the living crap out of you, just for real. Why would a real Triceratops do that? I have no idea. Because... Uh, as soon as, you know, they dealt with immediate threat, I'm pretty sure the most important thing for the animal would be to get on with its business and come back and look after whatever it is that we was trying to do in the first place, because, you know, you can't spare it all this time. If they are indeed protecting their nesting grounds, they should be there guarding it rather than chasing you around the whole area, you know, and uh, trying to basically murder you. That's not really how I think it would go. I, I personally doubt it very much. Not to mention that I don't see them being able to really catch up to you once you 
drive away on a jeep at a very high speed. I mean, I'm pretty sure they were able of charging at you on a, on foot if you were on foot and trying to run away. They would probably outrun you and gore you to be do to pieces uh, or skewer you or do whatever or just uh, blunt damage as well from these horns. Could probably break you in half and make you <laughs> wrap around it. But we, the point is. I don't see them chasing you, like, for a very long time and actually wanting to murder you. I don't see that happening. So that particular behavior demonstrated, to me, does not look very realistic at all. It looks more like a typical kind of awesome bra, maybe, sort of video game, sort of just uh, f complete fictional kind of way of interpreting the behavior. Every single interpretation at this point could be obviously classified as fiction because we really have nothing to compare it to or to have any reasonable data to taste to test the behavior of these species. What we do know is some of the evidence we do know from uh, certain you know points about the period as well that they lived and they also had you know this um, did I just say that they lived? Yeah, I mean, obviously they were alive at some point, <laughs> so yeah, boohoo, Captain Obvious. But anyway, um, uh, I was gonna say that they do have evidence of uh, preserved that they were indeed clashing with each other. Um, there is a specimen, uh, I believe, that has that preservation. If I, um, if I don't find it, then I'll try to find and post it later in the comments or in the description. If I have found it, it will pop up on the screen right here. If it hasn't, then it means I haven't been able to find it as I edited the video, just so you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, that that's not really what we uh, would see in a real life. I don't think this is how it would happen. They would make sure that they can secure the area and then they would just leave you alone at that point. I do not see them wanting to genuinely murder you. They want to remove the threat, remember? The animals who are invaded, they don't want to kill you, they want to remove the threat. If you are not removed, removed in any other means, then perhaps killing you would be the only means of removing the threat, in which case they would murder the, the, the living crap out of you. But otherwise, I don't see why they would want to genuinely murder you. Well, and with that said, um, there is really not much more, unfortunately, to analyze because we haven't been given a lot of uh, content and uh, material to work with as far as the game uh, is concerned. We only have this one uh, mini, bo mini boss kind of gameplay level in the game where we encounter the pair of Triceratops and that's all there is to it, unfortunately. So uh, this is obviously going to make for a much shorter video. Um, and. Uh, I guess that's all I can do for now for this one. There's really not much more to analyze. They don't even have a proper kind of, uh, you know, analysis like they did for a Giganotosaurus or a Tyrannosaurus. So I guess maybe I will be able to give you a lot more analysis based on other creatures because other creatures I wanted to look at were obviously the raptor because that needs to be looked at. <laughs> and uh, the other one I wanted to look at as well was an Allosaurus. But with Triceratops, this is so far what I can tell you is uh, happening here. There is really not much, but I hope that this clears up some issues and, and misunderstandings about why, what it looks like and about what it should look like and uh, how you should interpret what is correct and what is not correct, specifically when you talk about Triceratops, whether it is a Prorsus or a Horidus. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share, also support me on Patreon, uh, and uh, leave your comments, leave your suggestions as well of what else would you like me to look into. And uh, just to give you a side note, I uh, preferably at the moment I want to cover only the creatures that are actually based on heavily real animals, so I don't want any fictional creatures right now. So for example, I do not want to do a analysis of things like Indominus Rex, King Kong, Future Predator, you know, things like that that are just not real animals, basically. If it's a, for example, Giganotosaurus from Ark Survival, although we know how crazy and accurate it is, and it's absolutely ridiculous, and I am going to do one on this too, but it is a Giganotosaurus, so we will look into this, you know what I'm saying? So anything that has this kind of merit, and by the way, uh, if you are interested, do you want me to do a video on a specific Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus? Which is something that technically we shouldn't talk about because JP3 just should not exist. But for the argument's sake, 
do you want me to break it down in this kind of style, in this kind of, you know, form to see really what we know, what we don't know and what we should have known and what could have been introduced in order to make the concept work. So leave your like, oops, sorry, likes, yes, likes too, but <laughs> I meant leave your comments and uh, let me know what you think. Until then, take care, thanks very much for watching.